Hey everybody, this is Stefano and you're watching Lingua e Passione. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video you're going to discover what makes Italian a unique language among the Romance language family. We're going to take a look at the eight features that make Italian unique even among its own dearest cousins. If that sounds interesting, keep watching and I really hope you enjoy. Big premise before we get right into it. Today I'm going to compare Italian with the other major languages of the Romans family, that is Spanish, Portuguese, French and Romanian. These are also the languages that I can speak, so uh, I know that there are other languages, there are many other languages um, that are spoken by a, a smaller number of people. Uh, they will not be taken into account uh, for the sake of this video. This said, we can get right into it and uh, the first feature I want to discuss today is this one. The number uh, of articles and their combinations. Because Italian is the only Romance language that has two different articles for the masculine nouns. These articles are il and lo for masculine singular nouns and i and gli for masculine plural nouns. This feature creates a multitude of article and preposition combinations uh, such as nel, nello, nella, nei, negli, nelle for in plus article. Another example of this is the combination with the preposition di which becomes del, dello, della, and dei, degli, delle. And this does not happen in any of the other Romance languages. The second feature is that Italian is the only language that derived two different prepositions from the Latin preposition de. So while all other Romance languages got this one, we got these two. So that in Italian we can make a difference between una tazza di caffè and una tazza da caffè. Where tazza di caffè means a cup of coffee, where when you have coffee in it, and tazza da caffè means a coffee cup. So a cup for coffee, but it doesn't mean that it has some coffee in it yet. One could say that D is more used as the English of, whereas DA is more used as the English from, but it is not complete. This information is not complete. These prepositions are used in a number of different ways. For example, you can say DA ME o DA TE. At my place, or at your place. It has nothing to do with from. Okay? This feature can create a lot of problems to many students of Italian, but I know you can do it, guys. Keep going and uh, it's just a matter of practice. You will get there. The third feature is one of my favorite ones and it has to do with the structure to go plus verb. All other Romance languages have these, this uh, structure uh, that indicates something that is going to happen soon, so it's a, like a close future structure, such as voy a estudiar in Spanish, vou estudar in Portuguese, je vais étudier in French, and voy un in Romanian. But in Italian, if I say vado a studiare, that means something quite different. We cannot build a close future sentence with this structure. Because in Italian, andare a studiare means to physically move, eh? to actually go somewhere to do something, to study in this case. Okay, so there's a movement involved. Uh, it means I'm not going to do it here, I'm going to go somewhere and do 
that action, do that uh, thing somewhere else. This may seem a subtle one, but it's actually a big difference. And um, of course, many people get, get this wrong because uh, it's the only language that doesn't work that way. So if you are learning Italian, look out for this one, okay? The fourth feature has to do with the subjunctive. I'm sorry, guys, it had to be. The subjunctive had to come up at a certain point, right? So Italian is the only Romance language where the subjunctive mood, congiuntivo in Italian, uh, kicks in more often than not. You need to use, in theory, uh, congiuntivo, even when you are saying, I think that, uh, I believe that, such sentences, which doesn't happen in the other languages. Let's see a couple of examples of this. So in Spanish, you can say, creo que es una buena idea. In French, je pense que c'est une bonne idée. In Romanian, cred que este o idea buena. And in Portuguese, but in Italian, you say credo che sia una buona idea. You have sia instead of è. That is a subjunctive mood instead of a normal indicative mood. Another example, real quick. Credo che tu abbia ragione. Instead of credo che tu hai ragione. This doesn't sound right. But in all other Romance languages, this would be perfectly okay. The fifth feature is one that I actually did not know uh, before doing some research for this particular video. And that is that Italian is the only Romance language that has a, a difference between short and long consonants. So all consonants in Italian can be short or long, that is, single consonants or double consonants. And there are quite a lot of minimal pairs that show this. Let's take a look at some of them. Copia, coppia. Casa, cassa. Tuta, tutta. Caro, carro. As far as double R is concerned, it's actually the only exception to this because Spanish has a double R. So with the exception of double R in Spanish, this feature is valid. I have to say I was pretty flabbergasted when I discovered this one. Feature number six has to do with the way Italian is written. Um, compared to the other Romance languages, Italian has very, very few uh, diacritical marks and uh, written accents. So diacritical marks are those little things that you can add to uh, usually vowels, but, but also consonants to change a little bit the way those letters sound. And Italian has very, very few of them. In Italian, we have only two accents, uh, one of which can go only on the letter E, and all others are actually written only when the stress is on the last letter of the word. Here you can see uh, some examples of uh, diacritical marks used in uh, the other Romance languages. And here are some of the few cases where you would actually write a, an accent in Italian. Let me tell you that personally I love diacritical marks, so it's a, kind of a pity that Italian has just a few of them. The seventh feature is nothing special, I know, but still. Italian is the only Romance language that has two separate forms for unstressed third-person personal pronouns. That's a mouthful. <laughs> Very simply put, it's like in English where you can say to him and to her. I gave it to him, I gave it to her. The other Romance languages do not make this difference, but Italian does. So, for example, gli do il mio aiuto, to him, le do il mio aiuto, to her. For such cases, uh, French, for example, would have only lui. Spanish would have only le. Portuguese, je. And Romanian, lui. Last but not least, the future in the past, probably my absolute favorite. 
So in sentences such as they said they would wait, the would wait part becomes a conditional form in most other uh, Romance languages and a future form in Romanian. But in Italian, it's a past conditional, which is pretty strange. It sounds like a past in the past, but it's actually a future in the past. It's quite complicated, but let's take a look at an example. So, they said they would wait. Let's take a look at the would wait part in the different languages, okay? In French, it is qu'ils attendraient. Simple conditional. In Spanish, it is que esperarían or que iban a esperar. In Portuguese, que esperarían, also conditional. In Romanian, que vor aștepta, that's a future form. So in Italian we have que avrebbero aspettato, that's a past conditional. So Italian is the only Romance language that uses a past conditional to express um, a future action in the past, something that would happen. Temevo che sarebbe successo. I was afraid this would happen. Ha detto che sarebbe venuto a casa mia. He said he would come to my place. And so on. And now a super bonus for all those who have made it to this point of the video. The super bonus is Italian is the only Romance language that has a word with a double Q, and that is so quadro. What does so quadro mean? So quadro means uh, like upside down, it's, it's chaos. Uh, for example, mettere a so quadro la stanza. That means to turn the room upside down if you're looking for something or stuff like that. That's a pretty funny one, if you ask me. And yes, that is the only Italian word that has double Q in it. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And also, uh, if you have spotted some mistakes, please tell me in the comments. If you're learning Italian, let me know how many of these features you were already aware of. And other than that, guys, I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.